Now, if you love Christmas as much as I do, and you also love some really cool collaborations, then this video is going to be amazing because this is a Christmas in July collaboration on steroids. All right, you guys, when I mentioned a Christmas collaboration on steroids, I was not exaggerating at all. Shannon, the daily DIYer, who also has a second channel called The Cozy Christmas Cottage, asked me to be a part of her Christmas in July collaboration, and I was so excited because, hello, look at the amazing creators that are in this collaboration right now. There are so many cool projects coming up that I just can't keep talking. We just gotta get into my projects, that way you can go to the next video and watch the next one, the next one, next one, next one, because by the time you finish this huge, massive collaboration, it's gonna be December anyway. All right, guys. <laughs> All right, everyone, and for this first DIY, I'm gonna use this lantern that I picked up in the home and garden section at Dollar Tree. What's so cool about this lantern is that this light is easily replaceable. If this happens to die, you can put another battery-operated tea light in it, just like so, and you've got a great lantern. Now, I'm using this red and white twine that I picked up at Dollar Tree, and then also I'm using some red and white beads that I have left over from some Christmas garland. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that kind of, um, keychain thing that was at the top there and voila don't have to paint it because it's already white and that's the exact color combo I wanted to go with. Now I'm going to take my twine and I'm just going to peel off a or twist off a very large piece and I'm just going to double that up and slide it right through the hole there and then I'm going to bring those ends together again. You can do that because it will add some extra stability if you want or you can even just do a single thread. It's totally up to you. Now for for those two ends, anytime I am working with beads and trying to thread string or twine or anything similar, I will take some hot glue and I will just add a little bit to the end of the twine, kind of like you see me doing here. And then I just kind of squish and squeeze and squish and squeeze and make sure it's all twisted together. That way, when it dries, it almost creates like a needle effect. Now, it's not quite as sturdy as that. However, it does make a huge difference huge difference when you are threading this twine and you are wanting to create any kind of beaded garland or tassels or anything else. Now, we are going warp speed here and we are going to thread these beads. Again, any kind of color pattern, any kind of color combination. I started with the red ones first because I've got the white lantern and I am just go, 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 going and getting this done. Now, for my end here, I did this really fast because I did it off camera, but all I did was just twist it together at the end and tie it off there to create a very large loop. Now, let's embellish this. I only had these boxwood pieces, but I'm totally not hating on the boxwood. And then I had some ribbon and some bells. So we're gonna glue some boxwood pieces at the top, kind of on each side of where those beads are, like so. I created this fun little spray and I kind of love it the way it is, but I did go ahead and take one of my bells and just added that to that. And then I took that ribbon and just simply made a very simple bow tie glued it at the top and you've got the cutest ornament. Can you imagine a bunch of these on your Christmas tree? How fun would that be? Now for this next DIY, we're gonna go a little rustic. I've got these wood slices that I picked up. I believe they came from Michael's. They may have even came from Arteza. And we are going to create a very rustic looking snowman. I think that this is a great DIY that you could do with the kids. Now, in order to join these together, I'm gonna to have to drill a couple extra holes. So I'm gonna take my Ryobi drill here and I'm just going to replace that drill bit at the top there. And uh, I am going to, you're only gonna see me drill one one hole. After I painted everything, I realized that I really needed at least two of my wood rounds to have two holes. Now, put these in a clamp, put these in a vice grip, do something normal with it. Don't hold it like I'm doing. And uh, if you do that, obviously be very, very careful. But you are going to then paint everything. Now, I am using this ivory from Waverly. It is a chalk paint that I really love working on. And I'm really just trying to kind of go in between painting them completely white and not quite having them water or wash either. So 
that's kind of the explanation of my color choices there. Now I'm just taking a very kind of heavy gauge twine and I'm simply just tying these together. I'm gonna make sure that all my knots are on at least one side of these until you've got something that kind of looks like this. Now I have these Arteza paint markers and these are great. However, I will say whenever you're doing something like this, you're gonna have to do several passes. As you can see, mine's a little light right now but that's okay because when you do work with these and you continue to kind of let the coats dry in between each kind of pass as you can see the face is getting darker and darker so now I'm going to add some buttons and once again just kind of going through that same process getting those buttons darker and darker I am not an artist here but I think I did pretty good with the snowman I made his eye a little wonky there but that's okay now I'm going to take my orange marker and we're going to create a carrot nose on my snowman and then I took a little bit of red paint on my fingers gave them a little blush tied a ribbon to the top and you got the cutest little snowman ornament now this next DIY is super super fun you're gonna need a glass container like this I picked mine up from Ikea and then I grabbed a chamois this is a white chamois cloth that I picked up from Dollar Tree I just traced out a circle and then cut it out and then kind of cut it just right at the line so my circle fit perfectly down in the bottom then i have this bottle brush tree he's a little tall for my thing i'm doing here so i'm just going to take my wire cutters and just go right across the trunk of that tree we're going to trim that down a little bit so it fits down inside of my container from ikea and we are set to go there now we want the snow to stay in place. So I'm going to take the snow out. I'm gonna add just some dashes of glue down in the bottom here. I'm using the all-purpose glue from Shore Bonder, which sticks to almost everything. And then I'm gonna take my chamois cloth or my snow cloth, and we're gonna drop it down in the bottom there. Now, if it hangs up, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. How cute are these? I wanted these and wanted to use these for so long. I had these left over from my stash from last year. The first thing I'm gonna do is remove these kind of pieces of twine on the bottom of these skis because I am going to glue these skis together in a crisscross fashion. That way they don't fall down, first of all, but also because I want that set up. I love that kind of iconic crossed skis look that you see a lot of times with fall and you know Christmas decor and I think it would just be super super cute and for the next pieces I'm so excited with the way that this turns out like I'm really really blown away with this one there's this great little ski lift chair how cute is this and I was thinking if I glued it to the top of the lid then my ski lift kind of free form hangs however it's a little long as you can see so I'm just going to take it I'm going to tie it in another knot. I'm going to make sure that that knot is the proper size. And then I'm going to snip off the top of it because again, I want my ski chair to kind of hang freely from the lid of my jar. So I'm going to go ahead and add some glue. We are going to get that piece of twine set to where that chair is going to be hanging in the exact spot and then we are going to add in the other pieces so let's go ahead and add in our tree we're going to get that in the jar we're going to put that off to one side because remember we do have that hanging uh ski lift then you've got the other pieces and how cute is this Oh my gosh, if you added some twinkle lights or something to this, I think it could be absolutely adorable. I just tied the top off with a ribbon and I am obsessed. I cannot wait until Christmas time to display this. This next DIY is so easy. I found this adorable truck in the Dollar Tree Plus section. It was $3 and I thought this would be fantastic because everybody loves a truck. I took a piece of a pool needle, noodle, a pool noodle, and just sliced it off making sure it fit. I added some hot glue and then just put it back in the truck. Now to fill the truck up with Christmas cheer, I found this candle holder in my stash from last year that I had not used yet, and I thought that this could be perfect. So I just put, kind of picked apart, I can't talk today, you guys. I picked apart the candle holder 
and uh, used those pieces and literally just started filling in the back of my truck. Now, I apologize, my camera's acting a little wonky there, but now it's better and you can see a little bit clearer and I'm literally just kind of rebuilding and just filling up the back of that truck. There's no rhyme or reason to this. I thought that this would be just really, really cute as is. Although I do wish that I had a one of those bottle brush wreaths. Um, I know you've seen them, they're about the size of a quarter. How cute would that have been on the front of this? But still pretty darn cute if I do say so myself. About cuteness overload here, you've got this galvanized snowman. And then in the pet section, I found these pet scarves. I grabbed a couple of these last year and I have started to see them already showing up in my Dollar Tree. So be on the lookout. This galvanized snowman is so, so cute as is. I'm just gonna cut the tag off and then we are going to pull out the Sharpies and those paint markers. Now, for whatever reason, my black one on the paint marker was not working right on the galvanized, but I pulled out my Sharpie and I used the fine point Sharpie and it worked just fine. I went over it a couple times back and forth, but as you can see, it's really starting to show up and it's super, super cute. I did take my heat gun just to make sure that everything was set. And then the orange marker worked perfectly. So I was able to kind of recreate the carrot nose like I did on the previous snowman. How cute is he? I love his little button mouth. And then for that pet scarf, there's Velcro on it, you guys. And it's obviously made for a very small pet. I did try to put it on Otis, by the way, and he absolutely hated it. How cute is this? So simple, so easy. The kids would love this. Another very easy DIY. You can find these items right now. A piece of scrap wood from... Crafter Square. And then these Believe laser cut words, these are also from Crafter Square. And you can find these right now. As you can see, I have a Believe tattoo. So this is a word that is very, very special to me. Now for mine, all you have to do is kind of figure out where your glue points are. And then I've got these bells and then I just tied a very simple bow. And then for those glue points, all I did was glue that together. I spray painted it red. I added that bell and boom, believe Christmas is coming. All right, for this next DIY, I'm gonna be using this paper cardboard-esque mailbox that I picked up from Hobby Lobby last year on clearance, and also this Dollar Tree candle stand, which is going to be painted. Now, speaking of paint, we've got this deco art chalk paint for this mailbox, and uh, I'm going to start painting this. Now, I will say, um, I don't know if chalk paint was the best idea. Um, the chalk paint worked really great, of course. The coverage is fantastic. But after one and a half coats, I would say, I ended up switching to a gloss paint. I just used an acrylic gloss that I had. And uh, I have to say, I think it really worked out a lot better. Now, this was fun. This was definitely a process. I just had some good music on in the background and just took my time painting and getting every single bit of this covered. And I do mean every single bit. But as you can see with the gloss paint, I think it made a world of difference. And now I'm going to go ahead and embellish this. I just took out my Cricut, created some very easy kind of uh, designs. These were just in the kind of uh, design space. There weren't any kind of, uh, I didn't create these, I guess I really should say. Now, anytime I'm applying vinyl, especially to something like cardboard or paper, I'm really trying to focus just on the kind of sticker part and not the sticky part. Now, for my candle stand, I did paint that black and we are going to glue that onto the bottom of our mailbox because this is kind of going to look like a mailbox post. That's why I painted it black. Now I just glued it kind of there in the center and then I'm going to take my mailbox and just fill it with some miscellaneous stems and pieces that I have left over in my Christmas stash. I added junk mail to mine, but you could certainly add some Santa mail to yours. I think that this would be super, super cute for the kids and I think that it, they would get a kick out of sending a letter to Santa Claus and having a dedicated mailbox for it. 
And for my last DIY, we're gonna use some of these Dollar Tree wood pieces. This is definitely gonna be on the rustic side. And then I've got this kind of uh, off dark deep red with this khaki color and I had some beads that were very similar to it. So I thought I would go ahead and take some of these wood pieces out. I'm gonna use five or six, depending on how long you want your kind of piece of garland to be. That is up to you on how many pieces you are going to use. I kind of like these thicker, chubbier pieces because I do think that they're a little easier to drill into and you are going to be drilling into these so you do want to first of all of course be careful but you also want to have some pieces that are going to hold up because you know you're, you're going to want to make sure that this is good now i'm using one of my wood pieces down below to make sure that i don't drill through my table as you can see probably with some random little holes here and there i have done that before and uh this twine, I created this tassel, very similar to the way you would do kind of any tassel. This twine is hairy. It's a hairy little beast. So I took some of that, um, that my lighter and literally just started to burn off some of those little hairy pieces. And then I did my glue gun trick once again. And now I'm just gonna start adding some beads and I'm gonna create the pattern just kind of based on what I like. And then I, add in some wood pieces. You just want to make sure that when you are drilling your hole in the wood pieces that the hole is bigger than your twine because you want the twine to be able to go through there really, really easily. And then when I got it to the desired length that I wanted it, I just added another tassel to the end of it. I think that this is perfect for a tiered tray or a coffee table and I love how rustic this is, but I also love how you could use it right now and kind of tee it up for Christmas. All right, guys, let me know in the comments below what was your favorites. Also, I've got some bloopers for you at the end, so definitely stay tuned and watch those. Also, be sure and follow that playlist because you want to hop to the next video and watch all of the other crazy collaborations. Again, this amazing group of talented people, thank you so much for letting me join you guys. If you are one of my long-term subscribers, thank you also for being here. I truly appreciate your support, and if you're not a subscriber, maybe you'll join now. All right, guys, take care. Bye-bye guys but i absolutely love christmas and i have been asked to join this mega collaboration for christmas in july it's christmas time two one it is july and it means that it is july it's july A group of friends that have allowed me to in i don't know christmas time it's Christmas time, even though it's 200 degrees, it's 